Hello everyone, myself Dr. Nandita, welcome to Abdemi. Today in this video, I am going to share some mathematical problems with you based on thermodynamics, the laws and basic concept of thermodynamics. So with these ideas, let's solve some numerical problems. Now the problem one is asking 30.4 kilojoule is required to melt one mole of sodium chloride. The entropy change during melting is 28.4 joule per kelvin per mole. Now they are asking to calculate the melting point of sodium chloride. Now let's see how can we solve this. So what we know here is that, so let's just first write what are given. So, delta H fusion that is heat is required to melt one mole of sodium chloride is given. Delta H fusion for NaCl is given as 30.4 kilojoule per mole, right. What else is given? The entropy change during melting is also given. So, delta S fusion is also given which is equal to 28.4 joule per Kelvin per mole, right. So, what we know that delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S, right. So, because this is a phase change process, right, so what we know for a phase change delta G is equal to 0, right. So, what can we write? 0 is equal to delta H minus T delta S or delta H is equal to T delta S. Now, we have to calculate the melting point which is a temperature. So, we can write this temperature as Tm. So, what can we do? So, Tm is equal to delta H by delta S. Now that we have the values given, so we just put the values. So, delta H is 30 because it is given in kilojoule and this is in joule so we have to convert any of them so let's just convert the top one that is the delta h one as joule per mole that is 3400 joule per mole right and in the denominator we will just put the value as it is that is delta s of fusion is 28.4 joule Kelvin inverse mole inverse. So, joule will cancel out, mole inverse will cancel out and if you solve this will come out as 1070.4 Kelvin. So, this is the melting point of sodium chloride. This is what they have asked. Only you need to remember this formula which you have derived from thermodynamic phenomena, right? Very simple. Now let's move on to the next one. Problem 2 is asking for the reaction Ag2O solid to 2 Ag solid plus half O2 gas, delta H is equal to 30.56 kilojoule per mole and delta S is equal to 6.66 joule Kelvin inverse mole inverse at one atmosphere of pressure. Calculate the temperature at which delta G is equal to 0. Also predict the direction of the reaction at this temperature that we have to calculate now and second one is below this temperature, right. Now let's see how can we solve. We will use the same formula as we have used for the problem number 1. So, what is the formula that is delta G is equal to or delta G 0 is equal to delta H 0 minus T delta S 0. 
what they are asking that or saying that delta G is equal to 0. So that temperature we need to calculate. So we will put 0 here and that will lead you to delta H0 minus T delta S0 here and or delta H is equal to T delta S0 or this temperature maybe we can define it as Tf which is giving you delta H0 divided by delta S0. Now we have the values from here that your delta H is given as this one. So delta H is giving you 30.56 kilojoule mole inverse and delta S0 is given as 6.66 because it is given in joule and this is in kilojoule we have to convert any of them so I am converting this one so this will give you 6.66 times 10 to the power minus 3 kilojoule mole inverse kilojoule kelvin inverse mole inverse right now if you calculate that your tf would come out as 4589 kelvin if you calculate that so this is the temp temperature where the delta g is equal to 0 so now we will answer number 1 so at this temperature that means what we have calculated that is 4589 Kelvin. So we have to predict the direction. So because delta G is 0 this is nothing but an equilibrium process. So at equilibrium we know that delta G 0 is equal to 0. So this is the answer of the question 1. Now. Question 2 is below this temperature what will happen to the direction of the in which direction the reaction will proceed that we need to answer. So because delta G is 0 so what can we say that below this temperature that is below Tf is equal to 4589 Kelvin delta G must be greater than 0. So, delta H must be greater than T delta S or delta H0 must be greater than T delta S0. Because delta C0 is greater than 0, the forward direction if the reaction will proceed, then the process would be non-spontaneous. So, if the reaction goes in the forward direction, this would be a non-spontaneous process. It will not happen spontaneously. Or you can say that the backward direction, the reaction will be spontaneous. Or you can say that the reaction will follow the backward direction or the reaction will move to the backward direction. Because for in the forward direction, because delta G is greater than, delta G0 is greater than 0, so the forward reaction will not take place because it is non-spontaneous but the reverse reaction would be spontaneous and the reaction will go in the backward direction. In the backward direction the reaction would be spontaneous. This is the answer of the question number 2 that below this temperature the backward direction uh, backward reaction would be spontaneous very simple now let's move on to the final one that is problem number 3 what is the equilibrium constant k equilibrium for the following reaction at 400 kelvin the reaction is given as 2 nocl is giving you 2 no plus cl2 and uh, the given informations are delta h0 is equal to 77.2 kilojoule per mole 
and delta is 0 is equal to 122 joule per Kelvin inverse mole inverse or 122 joule Kelvin inverse mole inverse right. Now you need to remember the formula only. So what can we write is K equilibrium is equal to minus 2.303 R t log, I am sorry, uh, delta z z, right, log k equilibrium. So, this is the formula you need to remember for this kind of problem. And given informations are delta is 0 and delta is 0. So, because we know about delta z 0, so we have to convert the delta z in terms of delta h and delta s c right. So, log k equilibrium can be written as delta uh, minus delta z 0 divided by 2.303 r t log uh, sorry yeah or maybe I can yeah. So, log k equilibrium can be written as minus delta z 0 divided by 2.303 rt. Now, let us see how can we convert delta z 0 in terms of delta h and delta s 0 because these are the given information. So, we know that delta z is equal to delta h 0 minus t delta s 0 divided by 2.303 RT. Now we will put the values. So, delta H is given as this is in kj and this is in joule. So, we will convert the kj into joule for delta A0. So, this will give you 77200 joule per mole, right and minus T is given as 400 Kelvin. So, 400 K for your T and delta S would be just used as such because the unit would not be changed here. So, 122 Joule Kelvin inverse mole inverse right. This is for the upper part. And now let us put the values of the lower part. Here is a minus 2.303 times R that is 8.314 you know the value and T again 400k. So now if you solve the upper part will give you minus of 28400 28400 and the denominator if you solve it will give you the value of 7659 right. So, this is your log k equilibrium. Now, from here if you solve this one it will give you the value of minus 3.7080. Now, what you have log k equilibrium is equal to minus 3.7080. So, now if you write down for k equilibrium, it will give you e to the power minus that is anti log e to the power minus 3.7080. And now, if you solve, it will give you the value of 1.95 times 10 to the power minus 4. That is what we need to calculate from this problem. Very simple, just few uh, formulas that you need to keep in mind. And so, you will and you need to carefully change the units properly. So, that every um, given information are having the same uh, unit 
either in CGS or in SI and that, uh, after that if you calculate properly you will get the result, the correct result right. So very simple. I hope you have enjoyed this video. So get connected with Abdemi, visit Abdemi and you can have a look on the um, uploaded files or keep visiting our website. So thank you very much. Have a good day.